was horrible. They screwed it up. Why? They had the right attitude, but the wrong dependence. You can't depend on you. You have to depend on God. That's the only way we can make it. Period. Amen. It's just that simple. It really is. It's not rocket science. Yeah. But if we claim God's promises in our lives and for our lives, we will have victory. Victory upon victory. Because why? We're looking to the Father. And does it make any father any more happier than the child looking to him for the guidance, the understanding, direction? Do you think there's a father that would, oh, I don't want nothing to do with it. Are you kidding me? You want to make your father happy? That's how you do it. Your heavenly father, you think he's different? I don't believe so. I don't believe so. He wants to lead you. He wants to guide you. He wants you to hold on to his promises. He likes when you talk to him. You know, we need to talk to God like we do our friends. Why, why, why do we try to put God in this little box? You know, when we sit down and we talk with our friends, we have a nice conversation and it's just all open and real. That's the way it should be when we talk to God. Right? It shouldn't be a manuscript. Right? It shouldn't be a mantra. You know? We got whole religions built on that kind of garbage. Amen. It's not truth. It's not truth at all. Um, I want to start on chapter 6 real quickly here from verses 13. I'm going to start at yeah, Hebrews 6 and 13. For when God made promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. Praise the Lord. Saying, surely blessing I will bless thee and multiplying I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for com confirmation is to them an end of all strife. What chapter? I'm in Hebrews chapter 6. Yeah, in verse 17 now. Wherein God, willing, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. Some of the most beautiful words in the Bible say that God cannot lie. I love that verse, and I claim that verse so often you have no idea. God, you promised. God, you said this. I put my finger right on the Bible, and then I go right back to this, and I say, you cannot lie. So even though I don't see it, and I don't understand it, I know that you said it, and I believe it. And even though I don't yet see it, it will come. Amen. Everything God said, he's going to accomplish. Make no threats about it. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care if everything's falling apart and you think there just absolutely is no possible way. There is a possible way with God. We have people today that they want to just beat things up. They say that the creation of God is not true. I'm telling you, they look at things on science. They don't have faith. Faith is different than science. You know, it was back in the 80s when Mount St. Helens blew, right? What was it, a few months after that? We had these crustaceans that took millions of years to come about. It happened in a couple days. Are you kidding me? They'll tell you that, Adam, oh, that's not possible. That you could have a child that's, what, 15 feet tall maybe? 30 years old? I don't know. How old was Adam when he was born? Okay? That's not possible. That's not possible. Listen. With God, all things are possible. Amen. Let us never, ever forget that. You know, these people, the, the, the scientists, and I'm not against science. I think science is great. Science is wonderful. I mean, they calculate the speed of light, and they do all these things, and they can figure out where meteorites are going, and they can go back in time and plan all this. Like, it's amazing. It's amazing. But they forget to think that God... 
He's the one that designed everything. Okay? You gotta pull out all stops when you're talking about God. Because he can do things that doesn't make sense. Alright? If the speed of light is a certain miles an hour, God could make it faster. Okay? I don't know how he can do it, but he can do it. God can feed 5,000 people with a couple loaves and a few pieces of fish. Why do we doubt it? Why do we doubt it? It's that belief that causes you to put your foot in the Jordan and let it split. God wants to see action. Action. And action comes by belief. Where is your belief, brothers and sisters? Do you have it on the Lord or do you have it in people? I hope it's not in people. Certainly not in me. I hope it's in the Bible. You know, i got some more that I wanted to finish on, but I think we're going to just have to let it lay there because uh, I know people are hungry and sneezing and need to use the bathroom. But you know, I love to get up here and talk about the Lord Jesus Christ. And I could just keep going on and on and on because He is so wonderful. And the things that He's done in my life, in, in just a short period of time, I see God doing so much to me and for me. And I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I'm finally hearing things that I wasn't hearing before. You know? Amen. I finally <clears throat> hear it. Me too. I spent my whole life on fire, you know, moving 100 miles an hour. And for what? You miss it. You miss it all. I don't want to miss nothing. And I certainly am not going to miss heaven. Because I don't care where Jesus is, that's where I want to be. That's where I want to be. Somebody that loves me like that, wow. I mean, while I was yet his enemy, I was his enemy. That's what the Bible says. You were his enemy. Christ died for the ungodly. This is an amazing love. Agape, I tell you what, we will spend the next billion, trillion, I don't even can't come up with a number, eons, <laughs> trying to understand agape. Agape. To love something that's unlovable. How do you do that? You know, brothers and sisters, I want to just leave you with this thought. The true test of Christian character is to love the brother. Amen. To love the brother. So, you know what? Even if you don't agree, love the brother. It may even be your neighbor that's throwing the beer cans over the fence. You know what? Don't throw them back over the fence. Pick them up, throw them in a garbage can or a recycle bin and put them out. But if you're a good Adventist, you'll be like, oh man, somebody might see that beer can in my recycle bin. What if they don't drink it? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, let's, let's have our uh, closing song, 287.
Jesus is your Savior and that you're going to be with Him in heaven. I ask you to come forward today. The Holy Spirit's calling you to just come forward. Me or Ricky or Marty or somebody will pray with you and talk with you. Listen, this if you live 70, 80, 100 years on this planet and you miss eternity, it's not even worth it. I mean, you're, this life is the blink of an eye. Don't hesitate, brothers and sisters. Don't hesitate at all. We'll carry on and sing the prayer. You're welcome to come. Jesus, we love you. We're thankful so much. 